Hey, so welcome to video 10. Uh, we're into the double digits now, so get ready for the big time. To celebrate, we're going to cover something pretty quick. Uh, this is your alpha masks and your surface ID masks, and how to bake them out in Modo. Uh, this is not very complex, but uh, the question does come up from time to time, so I figured I'd just run through it real fast. Uh, an alpha mask is pretty self-explanatory. A surface ID mask is a texture where basically uh, all the different uh, types of materials that are on your high poly mesh, you give them a different material in Modo. And then your Surface ID mask has a different color for each of those materials. And now that I'm explaining this out loud, it's kind of horrendous. So uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just do it live. How about that? Uh, let's jump over to Modo and I'll start talking about it. Okay, so here we are in Modo. Now, uh, this is my high poly mesh. The uh, contrived prop that we're going to build is it's going to be this kind of spherical thing here with a flat top, and it's going to have this flower decal thing uh, on top of it. Now, I don't want to spend all these polygons on it, so what I'm going to do is bake the flower down to a flat plane and just stick that plat bleh stick that flat plane on top of the flat part of the sphere. And we'll do that using the alpha mask. And we'll use the surface ID mask to help with texturing. Now, uh, how I set up my high poly in Modo is I will, uh, on the high poly mesh, you know, I'll select the various pieces that I want to be different materials uh, and assign a temp material to them. So this top part, you know, I created the AA material that you see over here and just slapped it on and made it pink. And then there's the, the white one, the yellow, the green. And each of these are a distinct material uh, that I want to assign in Substance Painter. And truth be told, you don't even have to give it a color in Moto. You can just leave it, you know, default white. But it's hard to tell what's going on sometimes, uh, especially on more complex meshes. So I like to just throw random colors in because the colors don't matter. And you'll see that here in a bit. Now, the way you set up Modo to render your alpha and surface ID is over in the uh, shading tree. Now, the alpha output, uh, that's there by default. Uh, you get that with every Modo scene. Uh, Modo uses that for, um, for edge padding when you're doing normal maps, and I think it uh, uses it for some other stuff too. So it's just there. You can just have that for free. Uh, the other one you get for free is the final color output. Now this one is, is not so useful, uh, you know, uh, you know, unless you're doing a bunch of rendering or you want the end result of all the lighting and materials and all that kind of stuff, which I you really never do. So what you can do is just right click over here on the effect. And if you go un under geometry, you'll find surface ID. Just pick that from there. Now what Modo will do is it'll bake out a surface ID mask and an alpha mask, which is exactly what I want for this mesh. And I've already gone ahead and created you know, the low poly mesh I want to use for this. So you can see uh, real quick, we have the, you know, the sphere with the flat top and I got the plane that, or the, uh, the circular piece that I want to bake the flower pattern onto. And we'll just, and I'm going to UV that up real quick. And when I come back, we'll talk about how to bake. Finally done. Okay, so with this UV and everything, we're ready to bake. Now, baking in Modo is pretty straightforward. Um, there's just a couple things we have to be mindful of. So, uh, if you pick your render item at the top of the tree, you can see down here at the bottom you got your your width and your height for the bake. That's the width and the height of the texture it's going to bake out. Uh, it defaults to 1024, and that's fine for us. So we'll just leave that alone. Now when Moto bakes, Moto bakes to render output nodes that live in the shader tree. 
So if you go over here, you can see that uh, we get an alpha output for free, which is exactly what we want. Uh, we'll just leave that one where it is. And we get a final color output. Now, final color output is the end result of you know, all of the lights and materials and, and effects you have in the scene, which we're not interested in because we're not doing any kind of uh, VFX in Moto or whatever. We're, you know, we're looking for some game art. Um, and what all you got to do is right click over here where it says final color and go down to geometry and pick surface ID. That's the map that we want that's going to have all the funky colors on it. And, and we'll just, you know, we'll dive right in and take a look at that. So to bake, I make sure the high and low are visible. Select the low, select the UV map, render to render outputs. Now that's a good distance and launch. And we're done. So you can see this is the surface ID map. Um, so for each of those areas that I had a, um, that I had a unique material on in the high poly has been given a random color. Actually, I'm not sure if it's random or not, but it's certainly not the color that I picked, but it doesn't matter because it's only used for masking. Now uh, you'll see that in a minute. Now, if I flip this over to the alpha output, you can see that it looks much the same, but uh, our flower detail has retained all the leaves that are sticking out. And that's going to come in handy once we get over to the game engine because I can use that and we'll and we'll do that at the end. So I'm going to jump over to Substance Painter. Uh, I'm going to bake out the normal and everything and just get this prepped. Uh, and then I'll show you how to really leverage the Surface ID map and you'll see where it comes into its own. So here we are in Substance Painter. Now I've, I've baked out the uh, high, you know, the height of the low. I've got the normal map and all of our usual things over here set up, uh, but we don't have the ID mask yet because uh, I haven't imported it. So real quick, we'll, uh, we'll do that. We'll just say import image in the project. We'll grab our surface ID, pull it in, and it drops it right here. So all I have to do is select this and tell it to use that map. Now what I've done is I've set myself up for really easy masking. So let's just throw a base layer of material on this, right? Uh, I've, got, I've got this smart material that I made up for some other things. So I'll just throw that on top as a base layer to everything. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, that can stay metal. But I'd really rather have the, the top of the sphere be, let's say, copper or something. Uh, copper aged. Okay, we'll drag that over here and drop it in. Yeah, but the whole thing obviously changes to copper aged. So, uh, what you can do is you can add a. Uh, you know, obviously you can add the you know the regular masks uh, on your layers, but once you have the surface ID mask, you can add a mask with color selection, and adding that is kind of a shortcut. You just to warp you into this mode. Uh, once you're here, you click uh, the pick color button, and the Substance Painter will flip into this mode where it shows you all the colors that are on your surface map. And you just use the eyedropper and you say, yeah, that one. Uh, and now the copper color is limited to just that. And, you know, and we could do the same to the rest of it. We can say, okay, uh, the gold armor. We'll say, great, we want part of this to be gold armor. Mask with color selection, pick the bottom, and now that's the gold part. And this this ring around the middle, let's say, let's say we want that to be maybe plastic rubber. Yeah, that'll work. Same process. Actually, let me show you. Uh, you can also, uh, if I just say, okay, so this is rubber, and I add a black mask, and I'm like, oh, but I, yeah, what I'd like to do is use the surface ID mask. Well, right from here, you pick your your mask. You pull down this button, I think. Yeah, and choose Add Color Selection, and it gives you the same setup as as the other menu option I was using. It's just kind of a shortcut. So same process. Pick that part. That part's rubber now. So we got gold and rubber and copper and uh, it's a mess, but it demonstrates what I wanted to demonstrate how to quickly mask these things off.
So with this in mind, so with this done, <laughs> I'm going to export this to UE4. We'll jump in there and just have a real quick look at how well this overlay method uh, will work. Hey, so I actually forgot something. To look at this in Unreal Engine 4, we're going to have to assemble the final mesh. So this is what I typically do in Modo. I will take my baked uh, diffuse map and pull it into Modo and throw it on the model. Now pretend this prop is like big and complicated and it's hard to tell where everything goes necessarily just looking at a bunch of gray polygons. So with this set up this way, I can say, okay, so I know what these parts are. So I just grab this piece and you know, I'm going to use the little shortcut that I got set up to warp it to the middle and drag it down to where it just hovers barely over the surface like that. And, and that's going to be our final mesh once we get it you know, into Unreal. There's the pivot in the middle, looks good. Okay, so I'm going to export this to Unreal Engine and uh, we'll take a look at what the final result is. So real quick, uh, here it is in Unreal Engine 4. Uh, I brought in the mesh and I brought in the materials that we baked out. And here's the alpha mask from uh, the original bake and moto way back at the beginning of this video. <laughs> so uh, that's being used to drive the opacity of the masked texture. And that's what's allowing it to look like it's just stuck to the top of the mesh and looking you know, like it belongs there. Uh, I, uh, I've actually used this to great effect in one of my earlier asset packs that I put on the marketplace, the um, uh, industrial design props or something like that, I think it was called. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description. But that pack used this method for quite a few things. And, and you may even recognize this flower from it because I think I used that in there. But anyway, uh, we'll go over to Photoshop for a second. And, and I want to show you all the parts of this that are actually using that method because it's not always obvious. Uh, let me get a decent color here. There we go. So basically, it, uh, you can see down here, here's a, you know, uh, there's a flower decal, uh, all these, uh, all these nail heads. Uh, those are all using that method and they look natural as can be when they're in the scene. And I have another screenshot here too. Uh, this desk, for example, uh, uses it in a couple spots. Uh, these bolts on top of this stool, uh, uh, they're floating. Uh, all these flower decals are floating. These locks are floating. And I think that's all I can really see in this scene. But you can see that when you get it on a real prop, you can't even tell the difference. So anyway, uh, that was a quick overview of surface ID masks and alpha masks and how you can leverage them. Thanks.